Something happened at that party, didn't it? What are you talking about? Something happened at the party, and you're hiding it. Why? I'm not hiding anything, Aunt Stephanie. What's this? Who sent you these? Aunt Stephanie, that's private, OK? Well, I'm sorry, but the card was just lying there. Well, I was going to put it away. Look, if you don't mind, I want to get dressed now, OK? Please do. But I would like you to tell me who sent you the flowers. A friend. Someone that you met last night? No. I, I mean, I mean, yes. Well, Jessica, I, I don't think I quite understand. If you met someone that you think is kind of special, why wouldn't you want to share that? Why do you feel it's necessary for you to hide this? Why wouldn't you want to talk about this boy? Hey, how's it going, Michelle? Not bad. I just saw Ivana. She looked pretty beat up. Well, don't worry. I'm not going to get on your case. You know, I never let her on, Michelle. I know. But it sounds like you and Jessica are really getting involved. Well, that is personal. And I really don't feel like talking about that yet. I can see why. I mean, if the Foresters ever got wind of it. I have anxiously waited for you. The traffic, Your Highness, it's a nightmare. You have come from the airport? Uh, yes, sire. What were you doing there? That's where the story begins. What story? Your beautiful house guest. Her story, Prince Omar. Please, sit. Thank you, sir. Tell me everything you found out. Uh, you were right. She's not from here. So where is she from, Mustafa? Europe? America? And what of her family, her people? What do you know about them? Yes, of course. Thank you. You're welcome. How are you feeling? must have many questions. Questions? Yes. Do you know where you are? No. You're in Morocco, in Casablanca. Casablanca? Does that mean anything to you? Only in the movies. You have a sense of humor. That is good. You're going to need it. Dr. Warwick, I'm sorry to bother you. I hope I'm not intruding. No, not at all. It's nice to see you. Would you come in? Thank you very much. Uh, actually, I was going to call you, but I thought I should give you this in person. What is it? It's Taylor's paper. Yes. The one that she was going to present at the meeting in Egypt.
What a shame. This is an excellent piece of work. Now, Taylor had such a talent for research. I'm going to make sure this gets published. Thank you for bringing it to me. Well, how did you come across it? Was it in the files? No. Actually, that's why I'm here. Someone sent it to the office. Who sent it to you? Someone from England. If you look at it more closely, Dr. Warwick, especially those back pages. This is Taylor's handwriting. These are her notes. Went to pause. Which points to emphasize. My God, this is a presentation copy. That's right. How in the world could someone have sent this to you? A teller would have had this with her at all times while she was traveling. Sandra, this copy would have been destroyed in the plane crash. This place. This is one of the homes of Prince Omar. Omar. He took you under his care. I'm his personal physician, and now yours. What happened to me? We were hoping you could tell us that. I can't remember. That is understandable. You have been in a coma. A coma? Yes. For almost four months. Four months? It is a miracle you are even alive today. Please, do not strain yourself trying to recall. Your memory will return. Very soon, I'm sure. This prince, what does he have to do with this? He, dear lady, is the very reason you are sitting here talking with me this day. What can you tell me about her? I want to hear every detail. Well, this is what we have found. You told me she was found in the marketplace. Many weeks ago. Yes, but before that, she was seen at the airport. By whom? A member of the security police. He recognized her from the picture you gave me. And what did he have to say? Apparently, she struck up a conversation with him about Casablanca. She was asking a lot of questions, questions a tourist might ask. Of course, he was struck by her beauty, which is why he remembers her. But what was she doing there? Was she there on business? Was she visiting? Did the policeman not say anything about that? Yes, he did. He asked her those very same questions, Your Highness. She was not a visitor, nor was she here on business. She was passing through. Passing through? On her way to Cairo. Don, are you worried about that at all? What, the Forsters? They don't even know you and Jessica are dating. Well, to be honest, I really don't think about it that much. That I find hard to believe. Michelle, this is all very new to me. What, you've never been in love? <sighs> no, not like this. It caught me completely off guard. Do you like it? <laughs> yes. Yes, I like it just fine. So back to the big question. What are you going to do about the foresters? Look, I'm just not ready to talk about him yet, okay? Why? I'm, I'm just not. Well, it's apparent to me that he seems to be very important to you, isn't he? Yes, he is important to me. Well, then, tell me his name. Tell me all about him. I think this is wonderful. Your first boyfriend in Los Angeles. It's just 
too soon to talk about him, Aunt Stephanie, okay? Not even his name? Not especially. Well, what is it about him that you think I wouldn't approve of? You went to see him at that party last night, didn't you? Yeah. But when you left here, you told me that you were going to meet your girlfriends. That was a lie. You went there to meet him. Why did you feel it was necessary to lie about that? Jessica. Jessica, you cannot ignore me. I want an answer. I want to know why you felt it was necessary to lie about this boy. And I want you to answer me now. So my lady was on her way to Cairo. Did the policeman say why? He didn't know, but he got the impression her plane was en route, that it had made a stopover here in Morocco. And she got off during the stopover? Perhaps. But how would she end up unconscious in the marketplace? She would not have gone into town during the stopover. There wouldn't be time. These are questions I am now investigating, Your Highness. What else did this policeman say? Did he tell you her name, where she came from? Uh, no, sir. Perhaps if he had time to think about it? Your Highness, he remembered his conversation very clearly, almost word for word. I'm sure she made a big impression. That she did. But something else made an even bigger impression. Later that day, after talking to this beautiful woman who was en route to Egypt, the policeman recalls that the plane from Morocco bound for Cairo crashed and burned in the desert. The very plane, Your Highness, your lady was supposed to have been on. Prince Omar saved my life. You were brought to the hospital unconscious, wearing the clothes of a vagrant, a common street beggar. Such people are not always given priority care. But the prince, he was at the hospital visiting a friend. He saw you lying on a stretcher in a hallway. You were bleeding profusely. He demanded that you be given immediate care. Since that day, he has been at your side ever since. Why? Does he say that he knows me? No. You are a complete stranger to all of us. Then why does he care? The prince is a very benevolent man. His heart is of gold. He has done many things to alleviate the suffering of our people. But I'm not Moroccan, am I? No, you are certainly not Moroccan. But he saved my life anyway. Our prince is not bound by bloodlines. He is a man of true compassion. I want to see him. May I see him now? I will get him. No. I will go to him. You said this was sent from England? Yeah. Was there a cover letter with it? No. But there was a return address on the envelope. Dr. Kingsley Rayburn, Wellesley Medical Research Clinic, London. Do you know the name? I know the man. He's the head of the International Psychiatric Conference. The group that held the symposium in Egypt. I'm going to call Dr. Rayburn. I don't understand this. How could he possibly get his hands on a document that should have been in Taylor's possession when she died? I guess I should be more worried about that, but I'm not. You're not worried about Mr. and Mrs. Forrester finding out that you're dating their 17-year-old niece? Michelle, I'm not going to hurt her. Do you know how naive that sounds? Well, I'm not. Dylan, you're 20. You have to hurt her. It's inevitable. Oh, really? Why is it inevitable? Are you going to marry her? Of course not. I mean, you guys will date for a while, then you'll break up, and then there'll be pain. There always is. Well, that's just not gonna happen to me and Jessica. Oh? What are you saying? 
I'm saying... I'm saying that we're a whole lot closer than that. Just how close are you? Dylan, you haven't slept with her, have you? You have. Oh, man. Dylan, you are playing with dynamite. Aunt Stephanie, this is private. It's my personal life, OK? I respect that. I just want to know who he is. What's the difference? Well, you're my responsibility. If you're going to date someone, I want to know who it is. Why? Why do you have to? Because know I'm your guardian, and because you're not an adult. Oh, so you're going to treat me like a kid now, is that it? No, I'm not going to treat you like a kid, unless you act like one. Now, I don't understand why you're hiding this boy's identity. I'm not hiding it. I just want some privacy, OK? Jessica, this doesn't have a thing to do with privacy. It has to do with the people that you're going to associate with. People that are going to be your friends, the boys that you're going to date. If you're going to date this boy, I want to know who he is. Well, I'm not telling you, and that's that. Oh, no, that's not that's that. You tell me who he is, or you don't leave the house. That's your choice. You can't keep me here like a prisoner. Jessica, I can damn well do what I want. Now, I want you to tell me who he is, or you stay right here. Fine. You know where I am if you want to talk to me. You want to act like a child? You're grounded. Hello? Hello? Dr. Kingsley Rayburn? Yes, th this is James Warwick. I'm calling you from Los Angeles. Dr. Warwick, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Oh, very well, thanks. Uh, Kingsley, I, I, I'm calling you about this document that you sent to the office of the late Dr. Taylor Forrester. Ah, yes, the paper she was going to present. Devastating tragedy, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was. Kingsley, I need to know how you came upon this document. It was sent to me, actually. F from where and by, by whom? It came with a large package of material from the convention sent in Cairo. A package of materials? The things that were left over from the symposium last spring. Since I was the chairman, they sent all the leftover papers, abstracts, etc. to me. I noticed Taylor's paper among them, so I forwarded it to her office. But, Kingsley, this is her presentation copy. Is it? I really didn't look it over closely. I guess it has all of her notes, her, her reminders. <laughs> the point she wanted to hit, it's obviously the very copy she intended to use for her speech. Well, that's strange, isn't it? I would think that... Uh, yeah, she would have had it with her at all times. She was probably working on it while she was traveling. Well, that's impossible. It would have been destroyed in the crash. That's why I need to know where this has come from, Kingsley. Well, I'll certainly look into it, James. So will I. So will I. Thank you, Kingsley. I'll be in touch. What could this mean? God's name could this mean? Yes. What is it? Especially saving my life, Prince Omar. 